What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to build a secure login system with a database in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do for this video today is we're going to create a new database and we're going to fill it up with sample data. So with usernames and passwords, then we're going to build a server script, which is going to connect to that database. And we're also going to write a client script. The client will send a request to the server. The server will check for the validity of the username and the password in the database. And then the server is going to grant access to the client or not. And we're going to do this in a secure way. So we're going to have hashing, we're going to have prepared statements, so that we don't have um, major vulnerabilities here, we're going to start with a simple script samples.py. This is going to just create a database and fill it up with data, we're going to say SQLite three, so import SQLite three. Uh, of course, you can also work with different databases if you want to. Uh, and we're going to also import hashlib. So we're not going to store the passwords in clear text in the database, we're going to hash the password and then we're going to compare the hashes of um, the input and the hash of the password and we're going to see if they are the same. So the hashing is a one way street, you can hash something but you cannot unhash it. So if I hash my password, I have a combination um, of characters and, and uh, bytes, but I cannot take that combination and reverse it. So there is no way to do that. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to say connection equals SQLite three connect, we're going to connect to a uh, user data dot DB file, and we're going to say the cursor for that connection is con dot cursor. Oh, I repeated that command. There you go. And then we're going to just say cur execute a simple create statement for the table. So create table if not exists, the table is going to be called user data. And we're going to have basically just, I mean, actually three fields because we have an ID. So we're going to have the ID, it is going to be integer primary key, we're going to have the username, which is going to be a varchar 255 and not null and then the password will also be a varchar 255, not null. And this is our create statement now. Um, and all we have to do now is we have to insert a couple of users. So we're going to say username one, username two is going to be equal to Mike something and then um, hashlib. This is important. We're going to hash it. So hashlib dot sha two fifty six. Then the actual password, for example, Mike password. Uh, and then the result of that, uh, or first of all, we need to encode this. So this has to be in bytes. So we can either say be my password or just my password dot encode. You can also specify a character set if you want to so something like UTF eight. Um, and in the end, we want to hex digest. So we want to get the hex um, representation of the hash. So let me just show you what this looks like. So if I print actually this is not username two. sorry, this is the password one. I was a bit confused there. So when I print a password now you can see this is what we get. So this is the hash. This is the uh, the hash for the password Mike password. And this is what we write into the database. So let me just copy this now and do it four times. So I think two, three, four, two, three, four, and then we're going to call this I don't know, john will be a username and then striker 999. And then neural nine, and then we're going to have some passwords. So john will have the password my cat is great. 777. Striker will have I like striking and neural nine will have the creative password neural password, whatever. So those are the uh, pairs of usernames and passwords. And all we do now is we say cur dot execute insert into user data, username, password, values, and then we have these two question marks here. So we use a prepared statement, even though here, it would not be necessary, because this is not going to be the client script, this is just for us. Um, but there's no reason to not use prepared statements. So we're just going to do it, username one, and then password one, and then we copy this as well. And we change this to two, three, four, 
two, four, three, two. And in the end, all we need to do is we need to say connection dot commit. So this is just a sample data. This is not the login system yet. We do have now a database here. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to say select everything from user data. Let me just zoom in a little bit. There you go. I'm going to run this and you can see we have these users with their hashed passwords. That's what we wanted. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a server which is going to accept connections, it's going to uh, deal with the database and the client will then connect to that server. So we're going to say server.py. We're going to start by importing SQLite three again, we're going to also import hashlib again, obviously. And we're going to import socket and threading. And all we want to do now is we want to say server equals socket, 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 AF inet, sock stream. So basically a TCP internet socket. This makes it an internet socket. This makes it a connection oriented protocol. So TCP. Um, and then we just say server dot bind. In this case, I'm going to just bind it to a local host. Of course, if you're running this somewhere online, you want to have this um, set to the local IP address of the respective system. Um, port is going to be 9999 and then server dot listen. And all we need to do now is we need to define a function, which we're going to call handle connection, it's going to take a client as a parameter. And we're going to just send to the client the prompt. So we're going to say C send, we're going to just send username, so that the client can enter a username, we're going to encode this because via sockets, we can only send bytes. So we need to send encoded text. Um, and then we say the username is whatever the client responds to that message. So receive 1024 bytes and decode those bytes because the client will also encode the message, we have to decode it uh, to get the string. And then we're going to do the same thing here for password. So we're going to change username to password and we're going to change username here to password as well. And Basically, what we want to do now is uh, we want to hash the password to compare it against the database. So we don't just compare the password to the database because the database password is hashed and the password that we get here is clear text. Now, of course, you could also go ahead and encrypt that transmission because when a client sends something to the server in clear text, it's also um, a, um, a security risk. And if you want to do it even more professional, you can also encrypt the connection. I have a video on that. If you're interested, you can watch the video is called uh, encrypted chat in Python, there you'll learn how to exchange public and private keys and how to transmit information safely. Uh, for this video, I didn't want to do that because that would then be a too comprehensive thing here. Um, I want to focus on the security of the database itself. So here we're going to just transmit the password clear text. If you want to make it really secure, uh, you want to also encrypt the connection. I have a video on that as I mentioned already. So here we're going to just say the password is going to be hashlib dot. Uh, actually, we don't need to decode the password because we need to have bytes anyway. So we're going to say hashlib SHA 256 of the password and we're going to hex digest it. That is um, the hashed version. So if this, if the password was correct, this will equal whatever is in the database. So we do have the hash password, we're going to now open up a connection. So the connection is going to be SQLite three dot connect to user data dot DB. And we're going to also say cursor again, is equal to connection dot cursor. And we're going to just say cur execute. And here it's important that we use prepared statements because otherwise, uh, I could just inject SQL code as the username or the password, and then we would have some problems. Um, so we're going to say select everything from everything from user data, where username equals question mark, and password equals question mark. And then we want to put in here username and password from above. So there you go, that's the code. And now what we want to do is we want to say, okay, if there are any instances, so if cursor uh, dot fetch all so if this returns true, if there's anything, we have a correct password. So we can say login successful dot encode so that we send bytes again. Otherwise, we're going to copy this and say login failed. 
that's the basic idea. Of course, everything that happens after this line would be whatever you do. So for example, you may have some secret information here. So secrets, services, whatever. Here you have the stuff. Once you pass this point, you have the stuff that you want to give to the locked in user. Um, but yeah, this is the login process. Then we also need to say while true, we want to accept connection. So we want to say client and address is going to be equal to server dot accept. And the actual handling of this should happen uh, inside of a threat and the threat is going to have the target handle connection. We pass the function, we don't call it so no parentheses. We set the argument equal to client. You need to use the comma here to make it a tuple because otherwise it's just uh, an element inside of parentheses. Um, and then we need to start this thread again uh, as well. So that is the server the client is uh, way simpler, we just need to connect to the server and send the username and the password and then receive the results. So we need to say client.py. We're going to here just import socket, we don't need anything else. We're going to create a client, which is going to be socket 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 AFI net socket sock stream. So also TCP socket, but we're going to connect instead of binding. So we're going to connect to localhost. Um, when you connect, you would want to specify the public IP address of the service. So you host on the private IP address, you connect to the public IP address. In this case, it doesn't matter because we're doing this locally. But if you're connecting to a server on the internet, you specify and connect the public IP address and in server the private IP address. I have numerous videos explaining sockets and how this works. So if you want to check that out, uh, feel free to do so. And then we say message equals client receive 1024 bytes decode the message. Um, and actually, we don't need to. Um, oh, yeah, we're going to show the message. So client dot sent. And what we want to show here is we want to use the input method. So we want to get user input. And we're going to display the message in order to get the user input. So we display the message, wait for input, whatever we get here is going to be encoded and sent to the server. And we're going to do this actually twice. So this is the exact same code here. Um, and then we're going to just say print a client receive 1024 bytes. So either login failed or login successful. And that is it. So we can actually do that right now. Uh, we do have the samples in the database already. I'm going to run the server now. It's running down here. I'm going to run the client now. It's running down here. You can see that I got the prompt username. So let's enter something like hello world and then the password, something else, login failed. So you can see this does not work. Um, I can also try a user that exists like neural nine, for example, and then a password that's not correct, login failed. And if I now go ahead and say neural nine, neural password, I think it was login successful. So you can see the login works in the database itself. If for some reason, someone is able to steal the database to get into the database to print all the rows, they will not be able to know your password, they can maybe still crack your account. But if you use the password on different websites, it's going to be harder for them, they don't have the clear text password, they only have the hash that is needed to log into this database. Uh, of course, you should still use different passwords on different platforms. But this is a security measure that's quite useful. Um, and also, again, we don't have the obvious vulnerability of an SQL injection because we have prepared statements. Um, and again, if you want to do this, if you want to make this even more secure, you might consider exchanging private and public keys and then encrypting the connection and so on. Um, but as I mentioned already two times, there is a video on my channel where I explain how to do that. So if you want to do this on top of this, all you have to do is to encrypt uh, these sent and receive functions. And then you have a very secure connection, a very secure login system. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.